Hello and welcome to the Nikon D850 live event. We are so excited about this incredible camera. And before I, I you know, introduce you to this rowdy crew to my left, uh, I want to talk about a couple. <laughs> want to talk a couple uh, items first. This is live, like I said, and we've got some Q and A. If you go to Facebook.com/NikonUSA, go ahead and upload your your questions there, and uh, we'll we'll get to the panel so that we can we can uh, answer those questions. Now on to the panel. You guys ready for this? We are. Yes. Awesome. First of all, I want to introduce you guys to Lindsay Silverman, who is the senior product manager for Nikon. And we also have the privilege to have two Nikon ambassadors with us, both Dixie Dixon and Joe McNally. Welcome, you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, I introduce you as the Rowdy Crew, right? Are we going to get rowdy? We might. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Watch out. I don't know. You know? You never you know. know. <laughs> this, is, this is a Rowdy Crew. Okay, Lindsay, we want to jump right into it. There's some amazing and very versatile features that this Nikon D850 brings. Can you kind of give us a little a little overview of those sure. features? Yeah, so this camera is truly exciting, Melissa, as you said. It's creating quite the stir out there in the marketplace already. Uh, so for openers, it's a uh, Nikon's first um, backside illuminated sensor type camera. It's a 45.7 megapixel CMOS backside illuminated sensor, which means out there the benefits are that the camera can capture more light. And so even at high resolution, users can shoot uh, under lower light and get really, really low noise and terrific image quality. And then there's the speed aspect of the camera. The camera can shoot at seven frames per second at its full resolution, which is really, really cool enough as it is. But when you add the optional MBD18 uh, multi-power battery pack, along with an ENEL18 battery, the camera can shoot at nine frames per second. So now your mind starts to expand on what the camera can do and what it's capable of doing with its high resolution. Then you add to that that the camera's got uh, an ISO range from 64 to 25,600, so a very wide range of wow. shooting possibilities are, are within reach of D850 shooting. Um, you've got uh, a tilting touch LCD screen, that's super high resolution that you can control many aspects of the camera with. You've got 4K uh, full HD, uh, f excuse me, 4K full frame. It's the first for a Nikon DSLR, and it's got uh, 8K interval timer, time lapse that you can do that you'll hear a lot about in the next segment with mm -hmm. Steve and Corey and with Lucas, yeah. which is also very exciting. And then you got some incredibly versatile features of the camera, some, some little things that, are, that can be quite big to a lot of people. One of them is uh, a feature that we call um, focus shift photography, where you can actually do a little bit of focus stacking to get extreme depth of field out of macro subjects and things like that. There's a mode that um, actually allows you to shoot called silent live view. Um, and it's got an electronic shutter, so tied to the silent live view where it's totally silent shooting. Um, the camera can save a lot of battery energy in using this mode, using That's electronic great. shutter. It's really exciting to do this. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's one of those things that, that seems like it came out of left field, but it's very, very cool. It's a, it's a negative digitizer. It's a mode within D850 where if you attach a brand new accessory called the ES2 negative digitizer, you can actually take a negative, put it in a negative film strip holder, attach it to a micro nicor on D850, and turn those negatives into positives, almost like a scanner, and scan them right into the camera at 45.7 megapixel. And it also comes with a slide adapter. So some really, really cool stuff wow. in there. And then you yeah. add to that radio control, wireless, speed light, you know, really, really great stuff. I've got Joe on the panel and Dixie, and they're gonna talk more about things like that, but these are real tools for these photographers to use, and that's what we pride ourselves in with D850. It's not just a one-trick pony. This is a multi-versatile camera out there with tools for today's photographers to do what they do best. Definitely. Oh my gosh, there's so much to talk about in this in this short segment. Like we talked about, this is. Well, I'm this glad is we got all... Lindsay on this. I know, <laughs> I know, <laughs> gracious. It, you know, we're we're so happy to have this technology, <laughs> yes. and Lindsay really knows the numbers. So exactly. I'm glad you don't go out much on Friday night <laughs> and you actually read the manuals. Because like wow. Dixie and I, we want to take the cameras and go <laughs> and yes. charge. You know, well, so that was fantastic. That really yeah. was awesome. I'm so excited to dive into it with both of you, because. He knows the numbers, and yes, Lindsay has tried this camera, but so have you guys. So just so you guys at, at home know, this is the photo segment, and in about 45 minutes, we'll be doing the, uh, you know, exploring the video options as well for this particular camera, the Nikon D850. So what I'm so excited to do, first of all, okay, this is a hot topic, you guys, the resolution. 
Like the resolution for this D850 yeah. is incredible. First of all, can you tell us real, real quick the resolution, Lindsay? Yeah, so you know, this is a, a D850 series camera and the camera before it is the D810. So we've been getting a question, what is the difference? So that was a 36 megapixel camera. We virtually added 10 more megapixels to the camera. And so you've got higher resolution, which means for you more detail, more detail. It's got the same dynamic range of the A10, which is really uh, a great tribute to the design of the camera itself, Definitely. you know, and how the XP5 image processor handles those files. But for you and your work, it means that you can shoot, make bigger prints, you can have those beautiful fashion pictures that you do, those great flash pictures that you create, and you can retouch, you can go in later and, and take something and you yeah. can do some, some more well, magic with the image and not really degrade the image. And that's really, really important to, so to what, what the design the, philosophy of the camera is. What is that number, Lindsay? 45.7 megapixels. 45.7, that's awesome. Dixie, that's what huge. does that mean for you and your, your line of work? Yes, absolutely. Um, for me, this camera, I mean, it was pretty much a photographer's dream. I mean, I love the high megapixel capabilities. Yeah. Um, basically, I've had clients that actually request me to use medium format on certain advertising jobs. Right. And this camera kind of creates so I don't have to go to that and I get to be more candid with my subjects. I love the 35 millimeter format. Yeah. And this new Nikon D850 has just blown me away. The detail that you see okay. in these files is Well, what is it that it you is called insane. it? What is it you Oh, it's it? like shooting in beast mode. Beast mode, yeah. yes. Beast yeah. mode, yeah. Nikon D850 equals beast mode for Dixie Dixon. Because it's the perfect combination of speed <laughs> and super high res. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, for Joe, what does that mean for you, that high megapixel? What, what does that mean for you? Well, th this is the intersection of so many things we've wanted for so long. Mm -hmm. This D850 creates this, you know, one camera that does so many things. You know, I've, I've shot the Nikon system for many years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, currently I've got the D5, which is, you know, a tough camera, flagship camera, fast, amazing, yeah. all that stuff. I've got the D810, which I use for high res. Mm -hmm. And I've got the D500, which I use for, you know, knocking around. You know, it's a handy camera. Yeah. goes with us all the time. Mm -hmm got great features like that that tilt LCD mm -hmm. for instance this 850 puts all of that together into one package for me yeah. it's fast and the megapixels as Dixie said it kind of obviates the need to try for medium format plus it's got square square format approach to subjects which wow. I've always loved yeah. as a classic portraiture kind of format Definitely. and you don't really suffer because the camera's just so robust it's one of those little features, Joe, that I believe is, is really very important to a lot of people. You know, we've had crop modes in our cameras before. Um, what's new to D850 is that when you uh, engage the crop mode, where you can go from full frame 24 by 36 to DX or to 5 to 4, or the, what you're talking about, the square format, 1 to 1, is that now D850 using electrochromic technology within the viewfinder, it shades out the area around your cropped area. So now your eye goes exactly the way you want to compose, and now you're free to compose in that, that square format, that classic format, and put all the elements within there. It makes your mind think differently when you're out there taking pictures. That is yeah. so cool. And what, uh, what I'm personally so excited about is you guys actually got to hold the camera. You, you actually had it out on location on your shoots, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. we actually get to see that today. <laughs> and what I'd love to do, Dixie, can you kind of set up, mm -hmm. you got the camera, you had it, I mean, you haven't used it before ever, yes. and suddenly you had this beautiful shoot. Uh, a big commercial mm -hmm. shoot. Can absolutely. you kind of set us up for your photo shoot that you took it on? Yeah, absolutely. Basically, we created this whole big fashion shoot because um, I really wanted to show the, the vibrancy and the detail that this kind of camera is able to capture, just yeah. such resolution. So we were shot at this, this amazing location called the White Sparrow Barn. It has amazing natural light um, to work with, so I did shoot a lot of natural light type of stuff. And one of my favorite models, uh, Becca, was able to model for it. And just beautiful skin tones, the way that this camera captures those skin tones and renders that quality is really amazing. Okay. So I'd love to show you a couple of That would images. be awesome. Let's pull yeah. it up right now. So this first image I shot with the Nikon D850, obviously, and the Nikkor 105 millimeter lens. It's okay. the new Nikon lens that's just so go gorgeous for portraits. Um, you can really see the detail and the fashion and the, mm. the eyes, oh, it's and beautiful. it's just a really nice, you can see the beautiful dynamic range, um, all natural light on this type of shot. And if you go to the next image, you can see it at 100%. 
Um, so you can see just oh, the detail goodness, and the yeah. quality that you're able to capture with this new camera. Um, it's kind of a fashion photographer's dream, this camera. <laughs> so I have really, really enjoyed working with it. Um, so it really just gives you a lot of leeway. So if, for instance, an ad agency gives you a layout, horizontal layout, and then they end up changing their mind after the fact, which, as you know, happens a lot. It never happens. <laughs> oh, come on, a client changed their mind. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> they do that sometimes. Wow. So you're able to change the composition. You yeah. can crop in for a vertical or a square image, and I think that's really helpful. And that's Definitely. what this camera gives you a lot of leeway. Excellent. Sort of I'd love to see more. Yeah, I would absolutely. love to see more. Can we pull more up? Mm -hmm. So this image, um, you can see how the color rendition is just really beautiful. We actually ended up lighting this image, but the natural light ended up looking a lot more beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I shot this from the balcony, and this is actually a 50-foot train which was a crazy, crazy dress, really cool. And I had the stylist underneath the stairs and kept throwing the bottom of the train up and down like a parachute almost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, so it created that beautiful movement of the gown. And I shot this with the 58 millimeter Nikkor, um, which really has beautiful bokeh and it's a really fun look. That's yeah, gorgeous. So, yeah. Let's keep going. Cool. And then this particular wow. shot, was interesting. I really wanted to bring out the location in, as uh, in addition to the the dress, so you can create that beautiful vastness. Um, I shot this also with the 58 millimeter um, lens. And something I noticed is when you use those gold series lenses with the Nikon D850, the mm -hmm. quality is just outstanding. Um, wow. It's a really nice pairing because the lens and the camera communicate. Obviously, they've been optimized, so it just Definitely. is a really nice feature. Beautiful. Yeah. So this one was an interesting shot. I really wanted to kind of create that beautiful bokeh in the background, so I'm shooting pretty wide open. This particular image is ISO 400, and you can see that there's literally no grain. Um, and that's what's amazing about this camera. It goes down to 64 ISO, mm -hmm. um, and you know, just the huge capability of ISO and shooting natural light is really, really nice. You can see all the detail in the clothes. Um, so this was just a really fun shoot. I mean, I, I was uh, had a hard time sending back the camera after this shoot. <laughs> <laughs> it was really painful for me. I bet. Oh <laughs> I was at FedEx, too. like, yeah, a little, little bit of stress. <laughs> you shed a, a couple tears. <laughs> yes, I did, absolutely. Oh, wow. And this particular shot kind of gave me an opportunity to work with the seven frames per second, because um, I wanted to capture the movement of the dress. So um, this one was actually done with the 200 millimeter F2 and uh, you know just creating that cool moment we actually had her swinging in a lot of the shots um, that i also have images of you can see how it really captures that but it's crazy fast wow. um, seven frames per second with the without the battery pack and then nine frames per second with so it's pretty mm. incredible oh, the capabilities you know, in, the, in the past there's always been a balance to our products you know mm -hmm. if you wanted a high resolution camera mm -hmm. You did it, but you didn't get the speed vis-a-vis right. -vis frames per second. Right. If you wanted a camera that was fast and it's frames per second, you, you sacrificed resolution. Mm -hmm. This is a camera that, that really throws all that away and says you can have your cake and eat it too, pretty mm -hmm. much, right? You can have your high resolution and you can shoot for those, those beautiful moments that you wanted to have. And it does it by a combination of the sensor, that, that backside mm -hmm. illuminated sensor, which has very fast data readout, mm -hmm. and XP5 image processing, which processes those images super fast. So right. it's, it's really quite an achievement to the engineers to oh. design a, a, such a product that can do that. And how exciting Absolutely. to be a part of that and developing that. I mean, mm -hmm. you, Go you, ahead, you said a really, you know, that's perfect. There, I've always taught in photography, there's always a compromise. You always have to give something back if you yeah. want this. You're right. There, with this camera, there's no sacrifices. Mm. So you know, true. You've got speed and you've got resolution. You've got versatility. You've got all of the updated technology at your fingertips. And for me, also, this is a high-res camera that has the radio wireless flash capacity, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. Which I actually can't wait to look at your images. <laughs> Dixie, do you have any more that you'd like to show us? Um, I think there's one more in there. Okay, great. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. So this was a funny shot. This, this shot has been in my head for so many years because um, I've had this gown in my closet. Have you? Um, <laughs> it's one of those <laughs> random occurrences when I'm at a random store and I end up yes. buying a dress just knowing that I have to use it for a photo shoot. So I ended up, we, I originally wanted to use a horse that had spots, but the location wouldn't allow 
um, horses. So I just went with the next best thing, which was a Great Dane, who's basically the size of a Pretty horse. Pretty much a horse. <laughs> <laughs> so it ended up being a really fun shoot. This Great Dane's name is Fisher, and he kind of stole the show. So uh, oh, it's just backlit by the barn, beautiful light, and just kind of capturing those fun moments. So. It's Lots of detail. So sharp. <laughs> really shows off the dynamic range of the camera. I mean, oh, yeah. the shot is so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And then oh, utilizing beautiful. the square format. Then you went kind of a different look with this shoot. Yeah, was well, this, this is a portrait shoot. Mm -hmm. So this was uh, had an extra day with the camera. So I ended up just shooting some portraits of this beautiful little ballerina. And, you know, just that natural light. You can see the detail. And I love that square format, being able to shoot different formats. And this camera is really, really a lot of fun. And then you can't go wrong with black and white, right? No, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. What great photos, Dixie. Thank you so much for sharing Absolutely. those. <laughs> and what's fascinating about the images that we get to see, you've got these bright, lit, you know, <laughs> high key, and then you've got Joe's dark. <laughs> the dark side, right? The dark side, sure. I'll try not to hold it you against that, uh, <laughs> against you, Melissa, there. But, um, you know, and I, and I got. They let you have the camera for an extra day? Oh, hey, no. you shouldn't have told me that. Oh, no. You shouldn't have told me that. Oh, man. She uh, is cute, though. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, tell what, us about... What are you saying there, Joe, Melissa? Joe, Joe, come on. We don't need to pull out the fisticus yet. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm actually, speaking of, like, boxers, right? You <laughs> shot a boxer. And this image, oh my gosh, it actually, when we were looking at the images ahead of time, this image blows me away. Can you kind of talk to us about this shoot? I mean, it's just incredible. Sure, when you have a, a no frills face like this, this is Leon who many years in the ring and now a trainer, you approach it very simply. You know, he's got a character-driven face, oh, beautiful yeah. face really, and you know, in a very real way. And so this is lit very simply, just with one uh, speed light into a small softbox directly overhead. And I came in very close with a 105 uh, micro Nikkor, the F2.8 micro Nikkor, and I came in really close because I really wanted to see where that resolution would get me mm -hmm. in a face like this. And of course, he was very patient, thankfully, you know, because um, he could take me out with a punch if he <laughs> wanted to, so I was very respectful. And uh, uh, one, one light, and it was probably a 10 minute portrait session. Wow. You know. Well, and these these are the JPEG. These are these JPEGs are... out of the camera. Um, not working with the raw files yet. Yeah. It's still very early uh, with the camera for raw files, so I've been working with JPEGs. So this is uh, out of the camera, a couple of minor, you know, kind of, you know, tweaks, and there it is. It's just beautiful. It is so beautiful. I mean, you two have always been a couple of my favorite photographers, Lindsay, seeing your work and now seeing what you guys are doing with this Nikon D850, it really is amazing. But what's awesome is you actually, can we can we see close up on that, that shot? I think Just there's a see series the detail. here. Yeah, I cropped in. Yes. Okay. okay. And that's the original frame just with a crop and then wow. there you come into his eye. And you know, I've worked with some great cameras over time, but this just literally, you know, uh, sets me back on my heels because this is the D850 at its best because this is a massive crop and you still, there's no breakup. There's nothing in between the, the tonality of his skin. You feel like you could reach out and touch his skin. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's just gorgeous. What else do you have for us, Joe? Uh, I think there's a couple other things here coming up. We, uh, yeah, this young lady is a, um, a really tough boxer. She's going to have her first uh, fight in November. She's training really hard. Again, this is a one light picture, one speed light. I tried to keep it really simple, mm -hmm. included a little environment here. I threw the camera curve. You know, I'm in a, in a fluorescent lit gym, kind of dank, kind of dark, and I'm using a, the, it's a new lens. It's a 28 millimeter f1.4, shooting at about mm -hmm. f2 and hand-holding it, and my assistant is hand-holding the flash. I mean, this is really a no-frills production. And I just like the way the camera responded and the smoothness of it, the detail capture in the background. You know, prior to this kind of resolution, you might lose some of that. You mm -hmm. know, it might get blocked up or get a little dark. Mm -hmm. So I'm um, very happy with, uh, again, very quick portrait session. And then you went into kind of some, a little bit more fast-moving stuff. Yeah, this is, this is what I said earlier about the intersection this camera represents between speed and resolution. Because this is a deceptively hard photograph uh, in, in many ways. It's a parkour athlete. She's coming across the plane 
of focus uh, with the camera, you know, framed vertically, but I can't really track her in a continuous shooting mode because I'm using flash and the flashes are maxed out power wise. So I have to wait for her to get to that crucial moment and then I hit the shutter button and basically ask the camera to make an instantaneous decision on focus. Wow. And that's where the camera really shines is this intersection of speed and accuracy of response hooked up to all these megapixels. Yeah. It's pretty nuts. Wow. You know? Speaking of the focus, we didn't touch upon it, but one of the the really smartly designed features inside the camera is the use of the the D5's autofocus system yes. and that that's a camera that you know pros out there and and people who shoot D5 really really love is that autofocus system so you've got this incredible high resolution camera it demands the best doesn't it mm -hmm. so you've got 153 autofocus points you can configure it to your heart's content literally any type of shooting you want it's got 99 cross sensors to what you're talking about, how it really found the subject, those contrast points, and latched onto it and focused really quickly. And, and you know, that, you gotta have that right combination, because if it just had 45 megapixel, or it just shot seven frames per second, but the autofocus system wasn't up to par, we wouldn't be so excited about this camera. But what makes it truly exciting is that all of these things are very well thought out in combination together to, to give you this remarkable camera. It seems so versatile. I mean, you guys are saying it's great for speed, it's great for fashion, great for weddings. I mean, holy cow, this just covers so much. Joe, what else? What else have you shot? Do you want to show us any more? Uh, I believe I have one more. Yes, this was very late in the day, and she's a uh, television stunt person. And so she went up those columns and literally threw herself off. We have, obviously, mats on the floor, so <laughs> there were no injuries on the set. This is dusk, and I thought, you know, it's really too late in the day to pull this off. But we tried anyway, and it's a one light picture up front and then some backlights. But the, the tonality range, that's what I was kind of really amazed by. There's no blowout any place. There's no loss of detail. She's lit. She's also wearing something dark. She's against dark buildings. The sky is fading. The camera just is smooth across all of those transitions of color. Amazing. So again, you know, you're, you, this is the, the, the camera, you, you know, you've kind of been waiting for. Definitely. And Lindsay, do we hit on those those points of, you know, autofocus and RF? Is there anything that you want to talk about there? Yeah, there's, there's a couple of things that, you know, they, that are seemingly little things, but can amount to very, very big things in the right hands. One of those is the tilting touch LCD screen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're all used to these days using smartphones and tablets that you can touch and you can navigate through. And we've got some of that in our other cameras, but this one puts it all together. So for the touch tilting screen portion of the camera, you can navigate your way through every menu item. You could focus in live view for stills or for video. And one of the cool things that I know Joe is gonna fall in love with very, very quickly <laughs> is that when he's using his radio control wireless multiple speed lights, you can actually touch the screen and control the speed lights. Wow. No longer you know, pressing the camera, navigating through buttons, turning dials and doing things. You can just touch it and navigate through manual TTL, power ratio, you know, awesome. exp flash compensation, yeah. things like that. I think that's huge to be able to navigate Definitely. a camera that way. Definitely, and, and that was my question for you too. You know, you've, you've been utilizing the different bodies of the Nikon line. What was it like when they just handed this over? What was the workflow? Flow? How did it feel to you guys? Dixie, do you want to start? Absolutely. It felt very seamless. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really how I sum that mm -hmm. up. It felt, the ergonomics felt right, just felt really good in your hands. And I love the touch screen. It's really helpful. A lot of people okay. wouldn't realize how useful that is, but when I'm, say, on location and I'm not in a studio, I'm not able to shoot tethered to a computer, if I'm shooting to the back of the camera to a card, it's really nice to be able to zoom in to the hair and, and so the, the hairstylist can see their work um, and yes. then zoom into the makeup yeah. and see how the makeup looks and everything because everyone wants to see their piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. that's really useful with production and working with other creatives on creating mm -hmm. the best image possible because those on the fly decisions um, make all the difference. Wow. So I really, really love the touch screen and that capability. So it was really a seamless transition for me. Awesome. Loved what about it. for you, Joe? I'm, I'm there with Dixie. Uh, the muscle memory that addresses the camera is the same that I'm used to. Mm -hmm. So the buttons are all configured in the same way. Uh, it was a terrific transition. No, no, it is precise that it can actually eliminate, even with a client on the set, mm -hmm. I think 
the idea of pumping images over to a digital cart. Right? You know, you yes, can uh, work more simply. Uh, you don't have to have maybe the entourage, which mm -hmm. oftentimes comes when, you know, on the rare occasion you might have shot a, a medium format job. Mm -hmm. You have to have the digital cart and the technician and all of that. Mm -hmm. This camera wraps up and you can cursor in so tight into that image. You know exactly the quality. You know your sharpness. You yes. can show people on the set where you're going. You can get your talent incredibly excited. Yes. You know, you bring them around the camera and show them that, they're like, oh yeah, can we do <laughs> some more? On board. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, can we do some more? And that's important. Yeah. That's you great. Know. Yeah. Well, and there's there's so many other features. I know that we, I mean, this is the photography segment. Um, what else have we not touched on, Lindsay? You can shoot uh, for workflow. I mean, it's a big topic is workflow. Mm -hmm. You know, it's people are kind of worried at the same time they're excited about 45 megapixel. That's yeah. a lot to handle. Yeah. Well, depending on your workflow, you can shoot raw at the highest quality, or you can shoot raw in a medium raw shot, or you can shoot it in small raw. So whether you're shooting wedding or fashion, commercial sports like Joe would be shooting, um, and you have to push out that image to a client, rather than pushing out a JPEG, you can push out a m small or medium RAW file in addition to that large file. So That's you've got great. versatility in the RAW files of the camera. Um, the camera is, um, is very, very sleek. And one of the cool things, you know, we talked about the ISO range of 64 to 25,600, mm -hmm. and we talk about the improved performance with the BSI sensor in that the sensor is more sensitive to light. But when you're working in low light, it's hard to see the controls on your camera, right? Mm -hmm. But this, like our flagship D5, has illuminated back buttons on the camera. So when you're working in low light, you can just flip the switch on top of the camera and the controls light up so you know instantly where you are, what you need to do. You're not like fumbling around in the dark looking for those controls or wearing a light on your head right, and looking down yes. at the camera. You can actually do this and just turn the camera on and see all that stuff. Definitely. So it's there. It's got a joystick control like a D5 and the D500. So you know, if you want to change your autofocus positions really quickly, you can do that. And then there's the battery pack. We didn't talk much about that, but the MBD18 is an optional accessory. Um, and when you combine that, that battery pack with the ENEL18A, the older battery, or the current battery, the B, the camera can shoot at nine frames per second. And so that's very, very exciting to be able to shoot sequential sports or mm -hmm. for you for fashion, mm -hmm. just to catch those beautiful moments that you wouldn't get in a single shot, you can do it. And I think that's hugely and hugely important for photographer using a D850. Mm -hmm. There's also, I, I mean, I have here in my notes silent modes, you know. I mean, that's something that is so important to me as a mom that I don't, I'm not in their face clicking away. So there's so many amazing features about this Nikon D850. And I'm so excited to actually go to the audience. Again, go to facebook.com slash Nikon USA. And we are so excited to take your questions. Are you guys okay to take a few questions? I like flying sure. by the seat Absolutely. of our pants. That's <laughs> right. That's <laughs> right. Okay. Well, let's let's dive into this. Um, this is where Lindsay gets really. Nervous. That's right. That's <laughs> right. We're just going to toss it all down to Lindsay. No, there's actually some questions here for for the ambassadors. So, Excellent. Um, question from Kyle for the Nikon ambassadors: How would you compare it with other cameras you've used, and what are the advantages? And you kind of touched on that, Joe, a little bit. <laughs> Sure. Um, the, the, uh, that old phrase, where do I begin, comes to mind. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I, maybe I've struggled to say this during the course of the program, you know, in terms of wrapping so many things up into one piece of machinery. But I was just thinking, you know, uh, when Lindsay said, you know, sports, for instance, this is the first camera I think I've ever seen where you can take it to n a nighttime sports event and shoot high-speed action at nine frames a second at high ISO. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, go into the studio and shoot ISO 64 under strobe lit conditions and do fashion and beauty. Right. You know, I mean, so the, the, those used to be kind of polar opposites. Yeah. You'd have yeah. different cameras yeah. uh, for those different missions. So now you have one. So uh, that, you know, is reason enough, I think, for me to like be very, very excited and very jealous of the fact that Dixie had it an <laughs> extra day. Not that I want to keep it's water under the bridge, okay, Dixie. I, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not. That, I guess I'm going to tell you that I've been shooting with it for four or five months now. Oh, you know, <laughs> can we just crop him out of the shot? You know, you know just <laughs> concentrate on the three of us. You know, um, but yeah, I think 
you know, I've, I've always wondered, as the cameras have advanced, like how far can they go? You know, you get uh, incremental advances in certain, you know, D4 to D4S, something like that. This is a quantum leap forward, wow. and that's uh, an amazing thing. Awesome. What about you, Dixie? I mean, what can I say? <laughs> but I really truly think, I mean, I've had this feeling when I started shooting with the camera, I thought to myself, man, I wish I could reshoot my whole portfolio with yeah. this camera. Yeah. It's yeah. one of those moments yeah. where you're like, I wish that there were, <laughs> you know, sh shoots that I had done with this yeah. camera way yeah. back when, just because there's just so much detail. Mm. Makes, when you can see every eyelash and every pore, I love that. The yes. re my retoucher probably doesn't love that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's but so important to you. Yeah. I, I wanted to, you know, it's funny you bring that up, but when I started field testing the camera, that thought had come to mind. I want to reshoot everything I have ever done. Yes. Because finally seeing the detail and the dynamic range and the color it all come together, you know, and it's like, it's really exciting when you see that. It really is. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, got another one. I like this question. Question from Bob. Mm -hmm. I shoot classical large symphony events. How quiet? Is the camera in quiet mode? Well, there's quiet and then there's quiet. So <laughs> here's how it works. When you use live view silent mode and you engage the electronic shutter system in the camera, the mirror will swing up first and then the shutter will move out of position. From then on in, the camera doesn't make a sound. It is as quiet as it, it can be. And if you shoot in mode number one of this live view silent mode, the camera will shoot at six frames per second at 45 megapixel. So what you need to do is you need to meter the subject, meter the shot, and then focus, and then the camera will take over. In mode two, the camera will shoot at 30 frames per second without a sound, and then the camera will shoot in DX mode at 8.6 megapixel. So that's very exciting. So you really can't hear a thing going on in the camera because the sensor becomes the shutter unit, and it doesn't make a sound. So for those on set, just like he's doing here, yeah. those you know very quiet moments, you want to hear the passage, right? And you don't want to be disturbed. Yeah. Uh, for production, for people who shoot BTS on production, it's yeah. going to be great. For those who shoot weddings, you know, I, I've been at weddings. I've been told by, over and over again that you know you shoot at the at the taking of the vows and stuff. Mm -hmm. And in some churches and synagogues or whatever, the houses of worship, they don't want any sound there. So you can shoot totally, totally silent. So it, it, just think of it, if it, it demands silent shooting, you can do it with the camera. Excellent, great question, Bob, thank you. Let's move on to question from Victor. Again, these are on facebook.com slash Nikon USA if you guys wanna submit a question. Is the 3D tracking better than that on the D810? Who wants to take that well, the, one? The, the, the tracking is up to D5 level on the camera. Right. Wow. So uh, the DA10, as great as it was, and it is a really a great camera. It's still available. It's still out there. It's a marvelous, marvelous camera. Um, D8, D5 was newer technology, and D5 used a, a, an updated autofocus system, right? And it used an updated processor. And so this camera borrows those same attributes from D5. Mm -hmm. So you know, without knowing numbers, I mean, to be exact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a stab and say, yes, it is better than the DA10. I would say it's up to D5 capability. Wow, that's great. Okay, question from Vishal. Vishal, I hope I, I'm pronouncing <laughs> it correctly. How's ISO performance as compared to DA10? Joe, what would you say? Well, uh, I'll be straight up with you. I've shot the camera in uh, a fairly low range of ISO mm -hmm. at this point. Uh, but from what the results I've seen from other ambassadors, from Lindsay showing me his uh, material that he's generated over four or five weeks of shooting, um, <laughs> that um, the high ISO performance of this camera is uh, incredible. Wow. And so I look forward to that as well because being the kind of shooter that I am, I'm, I'm operating mostly under control, oftentimes using flash. So. Yes, one of the huge benefits to me for this camera is ISO 64. Hmm. You know, you've always been schooled. The lower your ISO, the better your quality. But I have no fear if I have to go to high ISO. Yeah. Wow, that's great. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. Here's a question from John. Uh, can you tell me more information about the focus shifting feature? Ooh, Ooh. That's a very cool yeah. feature. Yeah. So this is yeah. something that um, is very new to me. And so... Um, I've been interested in it in a while, but have never really tried it. 
But the, the theory of it is if you want to photograph something rather small, let's say an insect or something real small like that, um, and you want to achieve the maximum depth of field, um, then what you do is you take a series of photographs varying the focus position within each photo. Then through software you stack these images together, keeping them in registration, and then you build your depth of field that way. So what D850 incorporates in its custom settings, actually in its, uh, in its um, image mode here, um, is the ability to shoot up to 300 shots. And then you can tell the camera to shoot in very, very small movements on its focus or very wide movements from 1 to 10 on a sliding scale. Then you can actually use that same electronic shutter to move the mirror out of place. And then the sensor becomes the shutter. Now, this is a technique for me where I put the camera on a tripod. You focus at the front of your subject. So let's say it's the front of this lens. I want the back. I want this area in focus. I don't want to shoot at the smallest lens openings because, you know, an optical uh, uh, nature of any lens is the smaller the aperture, you can pick up diffraction, you know, which is like the bending of the light sure. rays to go to the corners of the frame. Mm -hmm. So you can actually degrade image quality by shooting at 22 and 32 and 45. So here maybe you pick the sweet spot of your lens, F8 and you shoot that sequence and you shoot a number of shots and then through third-party software you stack them together to get extreme depth of field throughout your subject and that's very exciting mm. because you can do that all again at, at the highest resolution at 45 megapixels so the possibilities for fine art photographer for you know scientific for medical for forensic things like that to me is very exciting to be able to do something like that in the camera. That is, that is very exciting Great, great question, John. Let's jump to a question from Sid. Sid asked, does square format, excuse me, does square format give the full view of the subject through the viewfinder, or there is there a cropped area before clicking the picture? Dixie, when you when yeah. you cropped yours, can you kind of absolutely tell us about it's, that experience? Um, it's really user friendly because it basically it shows you the square crop and then it shades out basically the rest of the, the image. So when you look through the viewfinder, you can see the actual square. Um, Very cool. And so it's a really easy way of shooting to tell what it is you're, you're getting, you know, that's that square format. Um, so I found it to be really helpful in the way that I was shooting. And you still retain much of its high resolution because you're right. shooting at uh, over 30 megapixel mm -hmm. at that time. Yeah. But you get the same dynamic range, you get the same beautiful tonality, the same tr tremendously faithful color when you're doing it. So it's almost like they turn, it turns red, kind of shades out the yeah. edges. Yeah, it was really helpful. Very cool. And That's you also great. have the access to, to all the other technology too, like mm -hmm. a super accurate autofocus, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, so. Absolutely. Excellent. Great question, Sid. This question is from Michael. Could you discuss the improvements of the intervalometer compared to the Nikon D810? You know, I can discuss that because okay. um, it, it's it's a Steve. Or <laughs> Steve. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Joe or Dixie, can you offer <laughs> up on that feature? I, I almost couldn't even get past <laughs> the intervalometer. The intervalometer all all the time, time, you know? yeah. I can't even say intervalometer. I know so that's a big Steve word. Steve is going to talk about that in the next session in, in depth. Um, so I, I'll, I'd rather wait to hear to have him do that, but I'm going to touch upon it. Okay. So you know you can shoot um, up to 9,999 shots. The beautiful thing about the intervalometer to create those 8K time lapse is that you're shooting at full resolution, whether you shoot a RAW file or a JPEG. And when you shoot to do these intervalometer sequence, just to get 10, 15 seconds, you've got to shoot upwards of 500, 600, 700 shots. So when you process, you can get these beautiful time lapses. So in order to do that, once again, the electronic shutter comes into play, mirror moves out of place, shutter moves open and then the sensor itself takes over. It does two things. One, no vibration, no mechanical vibration whatsoever in the camera. Hmm. Number two, no wear and tear on the shutter of the camera. Imagine shooting seven, eight hundred pictures. If you do time lapse a lot, you know, the shutter's got a 200,000 uh, life expectancy. Yeah. You get up to that really, really quick, you know, just think about it and do the math. And then the third is no sound. So when you're shooting, you know, depending on where you are, you don't scare any animals. If we put the camera right here in the studio to do a time lapse of us, you know, you, you'd, you'd hear the shutter opening and closing, so you don't hear that. So big time improvements. And then you can also do half a second. You can start your time lapse wow. in half a second. So, 
you know, really, really nifty things that you can do within the uh, intervalometer world with DA50. That's exciting. And again, we'll touch on that in the video part. Did you want to say something? Well, no, I was just going to say that's yeah. Lindsay's version of just touching on something. <laughs> you know, that's, uh, you know, just, just we got the time guy behind there. the camera yeah. saying, yeah. hey. That's why, love, but that's why you love me. That's why I love you. That's why I call you Obi-Wan. <laughs> you, know? you are Obi-Wan, the wise one over there. Okay. Did either of you shoot in, in some risky weather? We've got a question from Gregory. Is the Nikon D850 weather resistant? Mm. Mm. Yeah, Dixie, you were in a barn. Yeah. <laughs> I can't address like inclement weather, mm -hmm. but I can address the fact that when we were shooting the parkour folks, we were out in intense sunlight. And that's where the liaison with the SB5000s really saved me because I couldn't shoot that athlete because we were looking towards the west. The sun was going to go down behind Manhattan. She was thoroughly backlit, so I had to light her up front. There was tremendous disparity in the r dynamic range mm -hmm. I was confronted mm -hmm. with. Yeah. Really violent sun, really hard shadows. Mm -hmm. So I can address that. I wasn't out in a rainstorm, but the cam camera's dynamic range handled that very kind of rough and jagged shadow pattern I was confronted with. And then, of course, liaisoning with the, with the 5000s via radio mm -hmm. gave me a, a very beautifully smooth foreground. And then I was able to pull in the tonality of the background. Wow. So not well, bad weather, but also not easy weather to definitely. shoot it. Definitely. Yeah, so, no, that's, that's really great. From and Lindsay, I know, side, yeah. yeah. From the technical side, it's, it's got the same type of body build as the, the DA-10. It's a magnesium alloy body, so it is very sturdy. We've eliminated the built-in flash, so to give the camera more integrity and a lower profile. Mm -hmm. It's got uh, O-ring seals in it to handle the, the, the damp, humid, inclement weather. Mm -hmm. And the battery capacity, you know, it's an XP5, the image processor, makes the battery more efficient, so you're out. The last thing you want to do in super cold, super rainy weather, nasty weather, is be fumbling around to change batteries. The battery itself the, uh, that comes with the camera will give you over 1,800 shots on a single charge. So, you know, you put all that together and it makes for one durable camera when you're out there oh shooting. Oh yeah, definitely. I didn't have to change my battery once the entire day. It was pretty amazing. And that takes a yeah. lot of stress yeah. off you in, in a shoot. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Yeah. Okay, here's one from Sharon. Sharon asks, can you control focus and focus location using the touchscreen LCD? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah. If you're in live view, you can do that. Um, so you, there's two new features on the camera. One is called Touch AF. Mm -hmm. And I, I use my camera quite a bit on a tripod. And so um, you can just touch the LCD screen to the spot you want the camera to focus and it will focus. The second feature is called Touch AF Shutter where you touch the camera to focus, but then the camera will also shoot. So depending on your style, what you're trying to do, you can do both. Touch it just to focus, then you can shoot at your own timing, or have the camera focus and shoot at the same time. Awesome. We've got about three minutes left, and I think this is a great question for the ambassadors. Question from Michael. Michael asks, curious what the ambassadors consider their go-to camera currently, and will they switch? Joe? Uh, well, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think I am because I've I've already ordered two D eight fifties, you know, uh, and so, I mean, switching, you know, you don't want to. The D five is is a magnificent camera. It's mm -hmm. it's my go to camera. But as I said up up at the top of the program, you know, I have somewhat different missions for different models of cameras. Mm -hmm. I went to the Rio Olympics and the, I used D5 relentlessly. You know, D5 mm -hmm. was the camera of choice. Though, uh, I found myself really being enamored of the D500 because of the crop sensor in the D500. I could put on a 200 millimeter F2 mm -hmm. and I'd have the approximation of a 300 right. F, uh, F2 lens, mm -hmm. which in some of those events was wonderful. Mm -hmm. I also used the D500 as a remote and I fell in love with the tilt screen of the LCD because I was jamming the camera on a clamp into a railing and I had to keep it someplace so I, I couldn't get my head in there, you know? Yeah. Don't, don't say it. Don't say it. Um, Dixie, uh, she is a mean person. You know, I know yeah, what she was I know, thinking. I know. I saw that twinkle in the eye and I was like, oh, Joe, you just opened the door for that one. Um, so that's why I'm in love with this camera is it takes those convenience features and it takes very close to the speed of a D5. Mm -hmm. and the autofocus capacity of the D5, that system, and couples it now with this, it hooks it to the engine of super high resolution. So, yeah. 
You know, <laughs> am I going to abandon my D5? No. But is this camera going to be a star of the show and go with me everywhere? Yeah. And exactly. it's Dixie. Dixie, we've got five seconds. Oh, man. Five <laughs> seconds. Can you wrap it? <laughs> Can you wrap it? Absolutely. Oh. I yeah. have mine on pre-order. I love got the it. D5 as well. But yeah, this is the camera of totality. I think you said that once. Yeah, it really is. It encompasses Ooh. everything. Good marketing so. slogan. There you <laughs> go. Yes. Dixie you guys Dixie got the strikes right again. <laughs> the camera of totality. <laughs> <Just saying. laughs> yeah, she's good. She's good. What are you going to say? She's good. <laughs> you know? Oh, I love it. <laughs> Lindsay Silverman, Dixie Dixon, and Joe McNally, thank you so much. Or should we call you Obi-Wan? <laughs> thank you guys so much for sharing the information and for all your hard work in the shoots to get us something so fast. We really appreciate it. And for your questions at home, thank you so much. Don't go anywhere. In just a few minutes, we're going to be talking all things video. Stay tuned.